Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today I'm going to be talking about romances that have single moms in them. I love a good single parent romance, and I see a lot of single dad romance rec videos, but I don't see a lot of single mom romance rec videos, so I'm here to change that. These are 10 recommendations that I love that have a single mom in them. First, I have a 2022 favorite of mine, which is Delilah Green Doesn't Care by Ashley Herring Blake. I just can't stop staring at this cover. It is stunning. I love her tattoos. Like, look how much detail. Oh, I'm, I love, I love this book. This is the romance between Delilah and Claire. So when they were younger, they lived in this small town and Claire was besties. This is Claire, by the way. Claire was besties with Astrid's stepsister, Astrid. Um, and Astrid and Delilah didn't really get along. Like very stereotypical relationship of what you would think of with stepsisters, even stepmother. Delilah's stepmother was not great. Anyway, they grew up together and, but they were never friends. Like Delilah was always in her own little world and she felt ostracized by Astrid and her friend group. Anyway, it's years later, Delilah is now a very talented photographer. She lives in New York City and she has been roped into being the photographer for her stepsister Astrid's upcoming wedding in their small town. So she has to go to the small town again. And while she's there, she goes to a bar and bumps into Claire, who just happens to be hitting on her. In Claire's perspective, she sees this woman right here, Delilah, um, in this bar and is like, oh my gosh, she is stunning. She's very nervous, but she's gonna go talk to her, ask her out. She does not put two and two together that this is Delilah, the Delilah that is her best friend's stepsister. After that point, the cat's out of the bag. The scene where Delilah tells Claire who she actually is, is iconic. And um, yeah, after that point, after the bar scene, they just can't stop thinking about each other and things progress between the two of them, but they kind of have to keep it a secret because they don't really want to know, they don't want Astrid to know yet that they're having feelings and doing stuff together. And then there's also a few outside conflicts that influences these two. I really loved this, the tension between these two characters a plus, the banter, A plus. Like, I just, I loved this book so much. Claire in here is a single mother. Um, she was also bisexual and um, her baby daddy, if that's the right term for it. <laughs> I don't remember if they're married or not. Anyway, her baby daddy isn't the greatest, greatest guy, um, but she's still trying to get in a great, like parent situation with him. Um, she has, I believe like a 13 year old daughter. Um, and even Delilah's relationship with her daughter is fantastic. I love that. I love that aspect in the book for sure. I then have The Air He Breathes by Brittany C. Cherry or Brittany Cherry, she goes by both. <laughs> this is actually her first book in her Elements series. You don't need to read these books in order. They don't correlate at all, except for the fact that the titles have a commonality in it and that there's an element in it. <laughs> so this is The Air He Breathes. Be aware all of Brittany Cherry's books are highly emotional, so this book definitely pulls at your heartstrings. This is the romance between Tristan and Elizabeth and the romance does not start out great. Instead of having a meet cute, they have a meet like disaster. So um, Elizabeth and her five-year-old daughter, so Elizabeth is a single mom. Um, <laughs> that's the point of this video, Avery, duh. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Elizabeth and her five-year-old daughter have been living in Elizabeth's mother's home for a few months because Elizabeth experienced a great tragedy. Her husband passed and she's trying to get back on her feet and trying to figure out how to be a single mom. So she decides at the beginning of this book, like I've been living here for a while. We need to go back home. We need to go back home, live our lives. And so they decide to go back to their very small town and um, go back to their home. While she's driving in the rain, a dog ends up running into the street and she hits the dog with her car on accident, obviously. And the guy who owns the dog is Tristan and he's running with his dog in the rain at night and he is pissed. And she's like, I am so sorry. I didn't see your dog here. Get in the car. We're gonna drive you to the vet. Let's get this dog fixed. Like the dog lives by the way, there is no dog death in here. Uh, <laughs> anyway, um, they're in the vet. He's pretty, very grumpy, very angry with her. And she doesn't know, but Tristan is her new next door neighbor. This guy has moved in since she has been living with her mother. And um, he is known as the town grump now. Everyone tells her to steer clear of him. He is super mean, like he is not great. But after that occurrence, whenever they're neighbors, like they can't stop thinking about each other. And it gets a little bit unhealthy at the beginning where they use each other to get over each other's grief. Both of them have lost someone very important to them in their lives and they kind of use each other to remember them in a sense. 
Um, but then they realize that's very toxic and they break it off and then they start to fall in love with who that person actually is. This book is very emotional. It pulls at your heartstrings for sure. That's what you're gonna get with the Brittany Cherry book. So um, I really loved this and the whole discussion of being a parent in this book, amazing. I loved it. Next is Rafe, a buff male nanny by Rebecca Weatherspoon. I love this book. This book just puts a smile on my face because I feel like it is super unique compared to other nanny, boss employee, different power dynamic romances. So Rafe in here is our nanny in the situation, which is very unique in and of itself. Anyway, he gets this job interview to be a nanny to these two little girls. I think they're like four or five. Um, and their mother's name is Sloane and she is a very talented doctor. I believe she's a surgeon. Anyway, so right when he's in this interview, he thinks Sloane is like the most gorgeous woman he's ever seen in his life. And he up and tells her like, just so you know, before you consider hiring me, I find you very attractive and I am like very into you. And yeah, I just wanna let you know. And so I was like, oh my gosh, really? Thank you for letting me know. And then they have, he ha she hires him because he's a great nanny. And then they do some stuff together. Like I just found his like upfrontness so refreshing about that. Cause normally in these romance books, like people keep their internal monologue about something like that internal. Like they don't actually tell the person that they're into them when they're being hired for a job. But no, he up and tells her like, hey, just so you know, this might be a conflict of interest, but I am very attracted to you. It's so good. The kids in here were great too. I loved Sloane. Sloane is such a powerhouse woman. I love her. And then Rafe, he is stunning. He's a stunning man, okay? Next, I have an underrated one. I haven't heard anybody talk about this book, but I really liked it. This is When You're Ready by J.L. Berg. This is the romance between Claire and Logan. So Claire is a widow and she is also a single mother. Her husband ended up dying three years ago. I believe it was like known that he was gonna die. I think he was really sick. He ended up writing his wife a letter on the front that says, whenever you're ready, like open the letter and read it. It's been sitting on her night nightstand for three years. It's like she has not opened this letter and she doesn't know if she will ever be able to, if she'll ever be able to move on and like fully love somebody again after her husband died. One night, uh, something happens to her daughter. She's a single mother. Um, obviously, dang, I need to just stop saying that. Anyway, something happens to her daughter and she has to take her to the emergency room and there she meets the doctor that is treating her daughter named Logan. Logan is dealing with some things himself. He, I believe, just had a divorce and he feels like he's unworthy of love because that relationship just didn't work out. But the moment that Logan and Claire see each other, they are utterly transfixed. It's like the two of them wake each other up from this funk that they were in when it comes to love. Anyway, this book is full of loss and grief, so please be aware. And it's full of like representations of a mental health, specifically with depression. But I just think this is a great romance read overall, and I'm surprised not more people have read this one. And then I have a unique one. This is set by Alexandria House, and this is unique in the fact that this is like an older couple, and so the single mom, like her kids are grown. Um, but her her like role as being a mother is very prevalent in this book because her children or one specific person in her family is not doing great and is taking it out on her. Anyway, so our heroine and hero in this book uh, knew of each other in high school. They went to the same high school, but they weren't friends. They weren't in the same friend group. Like they didn't hang out, but they knew of each other. Um, so it's a few years later, I believe like 20 years later, it's their high school reunion and they bump into each other and they decide to have some fun <laughs> together and it turns into something more. This is a very short romance and it's very hot, okay? <laughs> um, and yeah, our heroine in here is a single mother and her daughter is not being a great daughter, just letting you know. So that does play a role in here. I then have Hide Your Heart by Tracy Alvarez. Lauren in here has a four-year-old son and they just moved to New Zealand. Before she moved to New Zealand, she was a very, very popular celebrity model, um, but she has moved to New Zealand, changed her identity, and is trying to live on the down low, make sure no one finds her because her husband is trying to find her. Her husband is not great, he's abusive. Enter Nate, who is her next door neighbor, who is trying to kind of flip her next, her house next door to her. He's trying to flip it and then sell it for higher profit, kind of. He's maybe, no, he's making it into a kind of like beach staycation for celebrities. 
and I believe he's like a um, journalist, a photojournalist, so he's gonna take pictures of people here. Lauren is not happy about this. She's like, I moved here to escape celebrity life this is not happening. And so they don't really get off on the right foot because Lauren is not happy with Nate. But then sparks fly between the two of them and um, Lauren has to grapple with whether or not she wants to tell this man who she actually is because then her abusive husband can find her. I really loved her kid in here. I loved that. I loved her role as a single mom. Um, and this romance is another underrated one that I have not heard anyone else talk about. So please pick it up. <laughs> Next is Wrong to Need You by Alicia Rai. Oh, I love Alicia Rai. And this is another underrated series. More people need to read this freaking series. It's so good. It's so diverse. It is hot. It, like, it is it's very fun. <laughs> this is the romance between Jackson and Sadia. So Sadia was best friends with Jackson when they were kids, but then she ended up falling in love with his older brother and they had a kid together. They got married. Um, but then said husband ended up passing away and Sadia has been a single mother now for a little bit. She doesn't know though that Jackson has been pining over his best friend Sadia for years. I think he was in the military and he ends up moving back home and helping Sadia run her restaurant that she owned with her husband before he passed. She's a little bit like in the dumps about this restaurant because it's not doing great ever since her husband passed. So he's gonna help her, I think by being the cook, I'm pretty sure, um, and just helping her with her business. And the two of them end up falling in love and he kind of reveals like, oh, I've always felt this way about you and she is shocked. And yeah, um, the single mom aspect in here is a little bit more in the down low. The, the kid is definitely in this book, but not as prevalent as one of the ones that has a, like a younger child, I believe. Um, he is over the age of 10. So take with that what you will. Next, I have Confess by Colleen Hoover. Now I can't really talk about the single mom aspects in here because that is kind of a spoiler. So I'm just gonna say that this does have a single mom aspect in this book, but our heroine here, um, Auburn, I believe, Auburn, she ends up like walking by this art gallery one day and she sees like these beautiful paintings, but then also on the door of this art studio is, or art gallery, is it gallery studio? Same thing. <laughs> In this book, it's the same thing. Anyway, she sees a bunch of these confessions on slips of paper um, all over the door. And the hero of this book is the artist for this gallery he ends up taking these confessions and making the confessions into a work of art. And that's all I'm gonna say. I believe there is a like movie or something like that about this book. I've never, I've never watched it. Um, so I thought that was interesting. Anyway, uh, if you're wanting to read a Colleen Hoover, this one does have a single mom trope. I also have two historicals that I'd love to mention. First is Duchess by Day, Mistress by Night by Stacey Reed. This is the romance between Reese and Georgiana. This romance is also very interesting because it's a different power dynamic than you normally see in a historical romance. In this one, you have the heroine who is a higher class or higher standing than the hero. So the heroine is a duchess who is a widow. Um, she also has a son who is going to be inheriting the title when he gets old enough. And then Reese is a lowly man um, who ended up earning his name. He was not born into it. He ended up earning his wealth by kind of like being like a debt collector of sorts. So he'll do something for someone in exchange for money or a debt or an IOU. And then it's kind of like grown his standing in society when it comes to his wealth. However, in British society, people didn't think well of you if you were not born into your title or born into your money. Anyway, so the moment that Georgiana sees Reese, she is so into him. She's like, you are what I've been looking for. She's been wanting a passionate, passionate affair ever since her husband died, not directly after her husband died, but shortly after, like, like she's been a widow for a while, okay? And she's been wanting someone to be with, you know? And so she is so into Reese and they really want their romance to progress. However, like their ranking status is kind of like a taboo thing. But then one day Georgiana's son gets taken and she tells Reese like, I will do anything, anything for you if you find my son. Like my son is everything for me, please find him. And so Reese with all of his power decides to go find her son for her. It's so good. And I love just Georgiana in here and the love that she has for her son was everything. And lastly, I have Darling Beast by Elizabeth Hoyt. I would say that this, you could read this as a standalone because I did, this was the first book that I read in the Maiden Lane series and it's book number seven. So if you wanna read this book on its own, go ahead. This is the romance between Lily and Apollo. So Apollo was falsely convicted of a murder and he ended up getting like sprung from jail. <laughs> and so he's been living on the down low, trying not to get in contact with any of the police about, like he doesn't want anyone to find him. He has a friend who owns this theater and he's trying to renovate it 
it and make it look great again because it was burned down in one of the previous books in the series apparently. Anyway, Apollo's really good at landscaping so he's been hired to do the landscaping work in this land. Lily ends up living in the remains of the theater. There's like one part of the building that was not burned down so she and her son end up living there. She is a very famous actress. The guy who owns the place is letting her live there very graciously. But the guy who owns it doesn't tell her like, hey, Apollo's gonna be working here, just by the way. So she has no clue. So she's trying to find her son one day who's like playing in the garden with their dog and she ends up across the guy and he's huge and he is not able to speak. He was beaten so badly with in his throat, like kicked in his throat so many times in jail that um, he is not able to speak anymore. And so there's this giant man who does not speak and she is terrified. She runs away. She has no idea what's going on and why this man is here. And she's scared for her son, trying to find her son. And then things kind of get revealed like, oh no, this is just a man. He's fine. He's hired to work here. Like it's okay. She thought it was like a monster at first. <laughs> so anyway, um, the two of them get to know each other and end up falling in love. Lily is a single mom in here and she is an actress. She's trying to upstart her acting career because back then there were not a lot of women actresses. I really love the relationship that she has with her son. There's so much going on with that relationship. Definitely pick this one up if you're wanting to read a historical romance. This was just unforgettable. I love this one. Anyways, there you have it. Those are 10 romance recommendations that have the single mom trope in them. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me an orange emoji of some sort in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank y'all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up. Today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day. Wake up, today's gonna be a good day.